quite amazed at the impact that my tarot work can have on, on people on an ordinary level. So that people would come to my classes saying, I want to know the tarot because the tarot is a fascinating thing and I've always looked at those cards and I thought, well, how can I do a reading for my friends and family? So initially, that's what might draw a few people and then at the end of even the beginner's course, they think, oh my God, I had no idea there was so much to it. And oh my God, I've thought a lot about life and it's made me more understanding, more tolerant because you realize in looking at all these incredible images that there is the part of you that's stroppy, there's the part of you that's thoughtful, there's the part of you that's sensitive, the part of you that's materialistic and you are in all your facets in those cards but also everybody around you is in all those cards. I think any spiritual practice, uh, preferably in its best form, would make you more compassionate and it sounds like that's what tarot gives you, is that it allows you to emphasize your compassion. Absolutely. I think if, I mean, the, the way that I, I teach it, I teach it in a very structured way so that you learn the very basics of the cards. But I'm also keen to develop students' understanding in an astrological capacity, a Kabbalistic capacity, psychological capacity, alchemical capacity. So there are streams. I mean, you couldn't possibly teach it all in a tarot course, but for students who really want to learn, if you learn the basics of the, tar of the, of the cards, and then you layer your understanding with courses on astrology, on the Kabbalah, on psychology, on alchemy, on all those kind of things, you will develop. And of course, life experience. You know, life experience that you cannot substitute anything for life experience which helps you grow, understand, empathize and explore your own personality and those of others. Isn't it interesting how all these different divinatory systems they do feed each other, they do fit together, they do help the understanding of each other and of course the personal connection that you make to your divinatory tool as well helps immensely. Absolutely. Uh, I think with, with the tarot, the, the one thing that I find so extraordinary, the way that astrology fits so perfectly into it, you the two marry so very well together. So if you learnt astrology and you learnt tarot, you would have a double whammy there in, in terms of knowledge. Then if you look at the Kabbalah, which by itself is a lifelong study, and you see that the astrology fits completely onto the tree of life or um, the Sefer Yetzirah, and you look at the, the spheres and the paths, how the astrology, the tarot fits perfectly onto it. And then you see how the different layers or the, the worlds of the tree of life, so you've got this, this tree of life that shows you uh, an example of how um, everything in the physical world was created, but also how you can reach divinity if you were so inclined. In other words, reach enlightenment that's like a map to God, if you like. And then if you, you look at that, you see the, the basic tree of life, you see it in four different worlds, the, the worlds of creation and formation. And then if you put those four worlds together, what you have is a double helix. And that is, is absolutely extraordinary to me, that all that information, all that incredible knowledge, profound knowledge on the nature of, of our spiritual selves and manifest physical selves in the world around us was known so many years ago and you know we, we think we're so clever mm -hmm. <laughs> we think we're so smart and and my goodness yes we do have a lot of knowledge but so much was not much as we've gained you know I, I think it's I would not want to live in a, any other time um, I love all the advances we've made in social justice areas um, I love the technological advances you know I love that I could have this show online it, it fills me I, I can take ownership for what I really want to do and I think a lot of people feel that way in a way that we just never could in history before and so there certainly are benefits to our current age but with that I completely agree with you it's like something has been disconnected from that you have to be very conscious about tapping into again because these technologies they're so easy to lose yourself in Gosh, yes, yes. Yeah. I mean, if you're studying, particularly using the internet as a tool, this explosion of knowledge that we all have access to um, has given us this huge evolutionary leap. And there's no doubt about it, we have made a huge evolutionary leap. And that has led to great insights, great rewards, but great trouble as well. So it's important when you're, you're learning and using the internet as a tool that you, you double check the information, that you look, at, you look at their references on the site, you know, to see where they're coming from, what their background is, because you can go down so many, uh, you know, paths, dead end paths that go nowhere. 
Um, but I, you know, I kind of see this this whole explosion of of technology as part of this Aquarian age that is developing, and the Aquarian age that we are are, are growing into now. Um, if you look at the sign of Aquarius as independent, as free thinking, as connecting with everyone on a more global, wider scale, as supporting the environment, as being ecologically minded, and consumed with technology, there couldn't be a better way of describing where we are now. I mean, that is our age. We are, it's so clearly the Aquarian age. If you look at it in the tarot, the, star, the card for Aquarius, interesting enough, is the star. So the star represents this divine maiden pouring water onto the earth, very much like the sign of Aquarius. And the idea is, is that the, the maiden, the star maiden, has access to divine and cosmic understanding and knowledge and pours that knowledge like, like a water onto parched earth. So if you see humanity as the parched earth that desperately needs it, and the earth itself as being parched, I mean, very literally, you know, droughts and the, these weather conditions that we are having that are either extraordinary floods, volcanic explosions, we are having extraordinary ecological crises now, and this, this water is, is being poured out um, to allow us to access this divine wisdom now. Prior to the star, you have the tower, and the tower represents a blinding flash of clarity that makes the tower crumble. And I see us being in sort of the tower and the star at the moment with the governments, institution, banks. I mean, at the moment in England, we're having this horrendous um, you know, hacking crisis that's having ramifications through uh, our newspapers and our media. But the idea of the tower is that it's an outworn structure. It's been built on principles that no longer serve the people, no longer serve the self, no longer serve the wisdom. So that tower has to crumble with that flash of, of insight and clarity that allows us to see what is really happening. And so everything that doesn't, shouldn't stand in the new age has to come down. And so people who are clinging to those structures are going to be more devastated by their losses than those who are, see the clarity and the wisdom in building a new one. And we see that on a personal level. On a personal level, many people are confronting change on a level that they've never experienced before. They are having to confront their own personal nightmares, demons, structures crumbling around them. We are being asked, or invited if you like, to embrace a new way of living. And if we can do that, and we can embrace our star maiden, then we have access to the sun, the moon, and the world, which comes after the star, um, which will enable us to live a more conscious life, more holistically. That is so beautiful. Isn't it? <laughs> love yourself, love life, be happy, and learn. <laughs> I can't Excellent. think of anything more. They, they encompass everything that I believe. Sometimes people study too much and forget to be happy with what they're doing. Some people uh, forget to learn and, and, and I'll be happy and it's important to learn as well. So it's important to work, to learn, to, but to be happy, be happy and love, love yourself and love others. I was speaking with some people and they asked me about life after death and I said, you know, I think a more important focus is to make yourself happy in this life and to live honorably in this life and derive your happiness from that because ultimately we have faith and what happens after this is a matter of faith but what we know is that we are alive right now and that we can do what we can to live consciously and compassionately and honestly and gratefully perhaps that's part of the secret of happiness humility absolutely and gratefully my massive thanks to Suzanne Corby, tarot reader, teacher extraordinaire, Wiccan practitioner, just an amazing person. I was so impressed as I was speaking to her about the love that radiates from her heart, the beauty that radiates from her. I really feel better for my conversation with her and I hope that you do as well. Thank you for watching this episode. Until we connect again, take care.